Golden Black Live. Jamarcus Shepard joins myself and Stacy Clarity, and it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. I appreciate it. I said I, I tweeted a half hour ago, which is which is a rare thing in its own right, that I needed a, a, an energy pick me up. <laughs> and we got two of the best today. We got Jamarcus here in the first segment. David Bodai will join us at 2:20, but Brian Newbert is the ultimate. Uh, inspirational guy. He'll join us at 2.40 for the uh, third segment. Talk about that, uh, if you're a Purdue fan, inspirational uh, great victory for the Boilermakers last night in Assembly Hall. I want to thank our sponsors, Triple X, on the hill but on the level. A Purdue tradition since 1929. John Basham and the good folks at Basham Rentals already taking uh, reservations for 2017-18 school year. State Farm agent Trent Johnson at trentismyagent.com and Hilton Garden Inn uh, Christy Kuntz, and when tomorrow's a big day, state HDI tonight. Jamarcus, uh, you've, you're, you, you, we'll get to your your talk at the recruiting roundup, which is still one of my all-time favorites. But you come to Promise Purdue, not to yell in my face, uh, right? and we have pictures of it too. But, uh, but this program needs, and there's no secret, needs needs a, an energy boost. The staff comes in, uh, uh, and uh, you're an optimistic guy. But what have you? What have you? You've been here now a month plus. What are you seeing about uh, Purdue University football in West Lafayette? Uh, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the, the way everyone has sort of embraced us in our arrival. I walked into a store the other day, and, and uh, a gentleman sort of stopped me and said, Hey, Coach Shepard? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> and, like, jumped and grabbed me and gave me a hug. So... Thank you for coming. So, you know, you know that, that's obviously how, how you want to be embraced. But, you know, you guys tend to love us until we lose one. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, hopefully. Always, we'll always love Jamarcus Shepard, the person. No matter what. <laughs> there you go. I appreciate that. But the players themselves have been, I mean, they've been at the, seat, at the edge of their seat, you know. Yeah. I try to get them to the edge yeah. of their seat. But they've been at the edge of their seat just absorbing soaking in every word that we say um it's been it been really cool to to work with them thus far you know there's a lot to be learned yeah. and there certainly is but uh it's encouraging when you have guys that are that are willing and uh and and want to 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 be successful I was able to talk to Matt Stinson, who was your high school coach at Northrop High School coach in Portland. Stinson. Um, and he just said it's so Everything you've done in the last three minutes just perfectly sets up what I'm going to say right now. Um, he just said, you know, your just approach to life is so positive and it's just so infectious. I mean, where did that come from? Because I mean, he's this is a guy who's known you since you were in eighth grade, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, uh, you know, I just, you know, sometimes growing up a little tougher, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just caused you to kind of look at the other side of the coin and and uh, you know pray for better things. You know, my grandmother did a tremendous job of raising me in the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my faith in, in, in the Lord is something that is first and foremost. But uh, just at the end of the day, I say it all the time. You know, you can go out there and complain, but nobody going to listen to you. Yeah, no one's going to listen to you. My like, they, 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 they're not. I mean, matter of fact, they're probably going to think less of you right. if you go out there complaining. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I think there is always a, a way to, you know, get something positive out of every situation that you, you know, I tell these young men all the time, you know, sometimes it's about, hey, learning what not to do that can help you out in the long run. And mm -hmm. as, a, as a young guy growing up, I, you know, I found out, you know, these are some things what not to do, mm -hmm. and that sort of helped me. But so, you know, I try to put a positive spin on everything that I do no matter what, and it's worked thus far. Yeah, you get a chance to go to DePaul University uh, down in Greencastle and, and play football. And I liked your comment. I think I read a quote from you saying, I, I didn't have any money then, and, and I haven't had money and much money most of my life. I'm used to it. I mean, that's, that's actually a good way to do it, to, 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 to have, put yourself down to the baser instinct of what you have to do in life. Well, yeah, no doubt about it. Now, you have some money now. That, that I know. We haven't seen your contract. We know you're still having money. But good. Now, well, go ahead. You know, you go to DePaul University and a kid not growing up with no money. Yeah. I mean, there's Hummers going around there. Yeah. Fred, there's, there's, there's some nice cars in yeah. those parking lots. And uh, But uh, it, what's great about it is, kid coming from nothing, hey, I got to go in there and blend right on yeah. in with yeah. all the kids that, 
you know, come from something. So, hey, hey, I tell you, you got to be a chameleon. You got to yeah. be able to adjust quickly and be able to change your colors real quickly so that you, no matter what situation you drop me in, that's why I'm recruiting. Yeah. You can drop me in Beverly Hills or you can drop me in Detroit. It doesn't matter where you put me at. I'm going to pretty much blend in pretty well. At one point, your Twitter handle handle said wide receiver developer. <laughs> and I, I wonder if that's because of, I mean, you were a good player. You ended up being a good player mm -hmm. there as well. I mean, is yes, that as much about you had to develop and then that's what you're doing with these kids too? Well, I think every every player, I don't care who you are. I don't care even, and I, and I don't mean to say this in any bad way, even Tom Brady, he's constantly developing yeah. his game. You know, so um, that that's what it that's what it calls for at at this level. You got to consistently be going out there developing diff different parts of your game to get better and better and better over and over and over again. And if you're not, I mean, there is no such thing as staying the same. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. Okay, and that's where I push these guys. Hey, you got to go get better because at the end of the day, you got to look yourself in the mirror. Coach Brown says it all the time. Hey. Win the day, okay? He says it all the time. Win the day. And uh, at the end of the day, you got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, did I get better or did I get worse? And so I don't believe in staying the same. And when you look at this group of receivers that you have, they're young. Um, not Maybe not necessarily in age, but in experience. I mean, you lost Certainly. really good receivers here uh, of the senior class from last year. Have you had a challenge like this before in your coaching career? Uh, like I told these guys, I mean, they're – this ain't a challenge, man. Challenge is when you don't have food to eat at home, okay? <laughs> challenge is when the lights are on. This yeah. isn't a challenge. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, I told them, hey, the ball's going to come in the air to somebody. So, <laughs> like so somebody got to catch it. So, yeah. uh, you know, I've put a lot of pressure on them to let them understand that I've recruited some other guys mm -hmm. that are going to come in. I mean, I, I don't hold secrets to, with my guys. There's no secrets. I got other guys that I've recruited that are mm -hmm. coming in here they're coming in to play, yeah. okay? They're not coming in to watch you play. Mm -hmm. So you better come in here right now and put put yeah. the pressure on yourself to be as good as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have uh, guys that we've worked with a little bit, Gregory Phillips, uh, who has been with us, and he's said that you've made quite an impression on him <laughs> from the get-go. Uh, uh, Greg's uh, you, awesome. Yeah, you and Greg. Have got some, <laughs> I want Greg as a person to develop some of your characteristics. Uh, he's got a lot of them. He's a great young man. All right, you've had a chance to uh, work with four, at least four head coaches of late, and then obviously others that have impacted you. Take me through, you know, Willie Taggart, Jeff Brown, who you're working with now, Mike Leach, Bobby Petrino. How, what, have, what have you taken from each one? Uh, you know, Coach Tagger is a constant competitor, man. Mm -hmm. I, I love that about him. Um, he's going to compete to the end. I mean, I tell my people that don't know him that, hey, what, are, what do you know about Coach Tagger? I mean, if, if, if the nuclear bomb hit the, the rest of the world, Coach Tagger's still yeah. going to be around because yeah. he's going to compete down to the last <laughs> second, okay? And that's how I feel about that guy. And, and obviously, I felt like I was a really, I've always been a good competitor. Yeah. He, he's, he's even more so. You know, Coach Brom, uh, believe it or not, one of the most cerebral guys that I've ever been around. I mean, really thinks through the game a lot of the football part, but understanding it from our player standpoint, yeah. you know, because he played in the league for so long, you know, he, he's really good about that. Um, Mike Leach. Is he as crazy as he seems? <laughs> look, look, what you see on those, uh, the, he's not putting on a show for you yeah. guys. Yeah. Like, that's who he is. Yeah. That's what he is. That's how he is. And when we come back to the meeting, he's very consistent about his message and what he wants to deliver yeah. to, to, to the players and to the coaches. Um, it, 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 but he does go off on tangents yeah. from time to time. <laughs> but, but what you see is what you get from him. It's not going to be a show. And then, obviously, Coach, uh, Coach Petrino, to me, he, he was – straightforward he cut through like a knife yeah. as tough as you get yeah. so when you talk about creating toughness in your players uh he once said to me if you want to be a great coach coach Shepard, you know what you're going to get your players to play the way that you did and that's how i was i was a tough son of a gun so i try to get these guys to be a tough guy yeah. And you came in as, what, a 100-pound freshman? Oh, my goodness, 98 pounds. Okay. You know, you give me a couple extra pounds. I appreciate that. <laughs> you came into college at 98 pounds? No, high school. High school, school. yeah. You, wrestled one, you told me you wrestled 150. I said, no, wait. Man, so it took you four years to get up there. Oh, my goodness. I, 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 it's always when you wrestle, you know those numbers. So <laughs> I was 98 pounds and then 125. Did you first start wrestling at 98, too? I was 98 pounds. Well, 
Coach Land, um, our uh, offensive coordinator at Northrop, and our head wrestling coach, yeah. he wrestled with my brother, Terrence Shepard. And uh, after the basketball season was over with, I mean, it was almost like the last shot went up. The horn goes off. He comes and grabs me. You're going to wrestling. Yeah. Well, what are you talking about? You're a wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> and he said it so forcefully, I pretty much believed him. So I went and wrestled. So that was that. What's it like being able to be back in Indiana and, and being able to gonna, you know, go out and really recruit the kids, whether it's in Fort Wayne or wherever you're going to go, but just to be home? Uh, it's, it's a feeling that Coach, Coach Poindexter and I were talking about it today, mm -hmm. and uh, it's sometimes hard to really put it in words. You, you have this vision as a young person of all these people who have influenced you and impacted you so much throughout your life. And, and you say to yourself, man, if I could ever impact other people that same way, how much of a blessing would that be? And to be able to do that with my people, like these are my people, like that's how I feel about this. Uh, Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, it, it doesn't matter, the whole state. Um, uh, Evansville, I mean, Terre Haute, these are my people, okay? Yeah. So uh, to be able to put them in a position, uh, look, we're going to have some success here, okay? All right? I I'm just going to let you know that right now up front, okay? We're going to have some success here. But to have some young men who come from my neighborhood mm -hmm. come here and be a part of that, turn man, you guys are going to look back on and say, woo, <laughs> let's go, That's Purdue. <laughs> That, for the record, is our first woohoo in the six or seven years of uh, Golden Black Lives. All right, now, this enthusiasm, which is phenomenal, and I want you to come back about 7.30 on, Friday, on Monday morning, uh, and we'll rent you. I'll be there. Who's the one that takes you to your base where they can sit there and, and get you to be solid? Is it your mom? Is it your family members? Is it a, is it a, a minister? Who, who can get you, can get you to... to Turn that off and fully listen and engage. Not that you don't listen, but yes. take you down to your to, to, to your foundation. Who's that person in your life? Uh, you know what? I don't I don't really I honestly believe and and you guys can believe whatever you want to. I'm <laughs> telling you what I believe. Okay. I honestly believe that every single day you have to bring a sort of energy to your own life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, uh, Robert Holland is a, is a person who talked to me about energy addicts yeah. and how energy is never, um, it never dissipates. It yeah. actually is transferred from one person to the next mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So he, he brought that concept to me and I said, no, that's, that's what I need to be all yeah. the time. Yeah. I need to be able to bring energy to other people because these guys, these players, they mope around. Now, the truth, uh, to answer your actual question, my wife, uh, Hallie, she she at times can kind of get me to settle down and just <laughs> you know you know just kind of uh, when I'm at home, guys. Uh, let's I'm at home. I'm sitting on the couch hanging with my kids, man, yeah. playing with my kids. And when my son wants to go down and play Madden on the video game on the PlayStation. We will go play some Madden. We'll go shoot some hoops. Uh, but when you see my son, he's got pretty good energy too. Now. <laughs> oh, <I see. laughs> he's got pretty good energy too now. <laughs> and, can you, and you can you make him a verbal commitment? Right? The next, next thing. There next you go. Step. All right, Cam. I want you to put some of these pictures up, and and, and I know Stacy's got some other questions, but. We had uh, really. Uh, there was spit coming. Jamarcus <laughs> put on, uh, at least in all my years of watching Purdue events, I will say, and, there been, and that's many, uh, this was a, 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 a shining moment in the history. Was, this is the recruiting roundup, which was right before the Purdue Northwestern men's game. And Jamarcus led it off. And you told Stacy, uh, Stacy told me before this, or somebody, we yeah. got wind. This was not, this was going to happen. Yeah. You were going to bring I, it. He told me, he was, I'm going to go in the front row. Because yeah. I, I told him, you don't need a mic. But you, you kept the mic. So I that did. was good. You need to save your voice a little I bit. I did, but, just a little bit. But, yeah. Um, yeah, you got in the now, face. Roll, that, roll, roll some of those through, because we've got a couple other ones there that I want him to comment on. And one was a face-to-face -face <laughs> with this person. Was that contrived? Well, be honest. I went up to him and I introduced myself Even right it came away. Off well, yeah. yeah, I introduced myself to him and I said, I, I don't want to startle okay. you, but I'm going to let you know, just be prepared. Now, he didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but 
I did kind of just want to make sure he I knew his great. name before I before I walked up to him. That's so. gonna run two pages in our mag <laughs> our next magazine too, because I just love that picture that Tom Campbell took. And then this, oh. this was the uh, the rip it off, and it says the, it's the Brom Squad. And what's the what's the uh, subhead to the uh, street fight between the whistles? So uh, and and what where did that tagline come from? Well, Coach Brom last year uh, during the prior to the Alabama game when their Western was about to play Alabama. Uh, you know, Coach Brown brought the energy. <laughs> I, was, I was proud of him. I actually watched the game in Washington. You know, we were, we were uh, having meetings, and then we had some time to relax, and I actually saw it live. Yeah. And he throwing chairs. Yeah. And, yeah, he went nuts. So I, I wanted to make sure he knew uh, he, he brings the juice. I'm going to bring it right with him. So we'll that do that. Is that the only shirt? Is that the only one I have? I mean, is that was That's, that made just for you, or does everybody? No, like them? they have those available. Uh, you can you can get those at the mall. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was walking through the mall the night before this uh, recruiting <laughs> roundup, saw it, and I said. Um, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing that. Greg Brom that's in the hilarious. background did a fine job oh, also goodness. bringing some, some juice to Isn't it. he not great at he's, delivery? Oh, he delivers We had right him on the point. show a couple of weeks ago, and I had that sense he, he's, got, <laughs> he's got the talkative side of the Brom family. What's it like, though, working with three brothers? I mean, do you, I mean the three brothers. I mean, they all uh, bring some uh, different energy levels to them, but uh, why, does that, why is that going to make your staff better? And obviously Greg's not on the, on the coaching staff, but involved in the program very closely no well I think uh you know Brian really brings kind of like a calmness yeah. he's really definitely by far the calmest of them all yeah. and you guys you've seen coach Brown out there and he he's, he presents himself extremely well that's who he is you know but when football starts yeah. he like loses his mind it's awesome <laughs> okay we all kind of lose our mind you know so it's awesome it's awesome to be a part of that but he's more the calmer yeah. one of the group. And then Coach Brom, game day especially, gets a little more, a little rougher around the edges. And then Greg is kind of the cerebral yeah. one of all of them, yeah. you know. But to kind of work with all of them, it's, it's kind of great having a good relationship with yeah. all of them because, you know, I can sort of go to Greg for this particular thing or go to Coach for – for another thing, and then obviously Brian and I are starting to develop our relationship now, this being the first year yeah. we've worked together. But um, the cool part of seeing them argue, not even necessarily argue, debate. but like, <laughs> like like debate a little bit between each Compete. other. And then, yeah. and then Jeff will definitely say, okay, we're not going to have our brothers or the quarrel here yeah. right now, which is awesome. So, you know, that, that's really cool. I mean, to me, I don't, I, don't, I don't know that it gets any better than that, to be able to have your brothers right there fighting the good fight with you. I don't know if it gets any better than that. Yeah. This seems kind of the the perfect profession for you because you're able to, you know, mentor guys and and then still be in football, but you weren't a coach mm -hmm. for a while. I mean, how did you get into this after not being in it? Did you feel like, okay, I'm going to be a coach and then you just had to wait through it or you never even knew if you were going to be here? You know, I thought I was going to get a quality I mean, I'm sorry, a graduate assistantship at Northwestern right after I pretty much got out of college. Mm -hmm. I thought that was going to come through. It didn't. And at the time, I didn't even really know what all was involved with coaching. So I started coaching some high school and stuff like that. But I'm a type of person. I mean, I worked in the corporate, well, I feel like it was corporate West at the NCAA. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I worked there for a while. And at there, I can't be all crazy and stuff all the time like yeah. I am. You know, so yeah. I would coach football after, after work. And then uh, working for the drug testing company, mm -hmm. I mean, the personality that you kind of see for me now, it's kind of how I was in drug testing, believe it or not. Um, because people would just, you know, drug testing is a little tough. You know, it's a tough environment, you know. You know, you get done winning a national championship, now you got to go pee in a cup, you know. Yeah. And, and we think you're a cheater all of a sudden. No, we don't really think you're a cheater. So, you know, to be able to calm those people down and come and talk to them and have a conversation with them, it, I just got lucky. Somebody noticed it and said, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? And his name's Fred Gibson, yeah. a person that I'll forever be grateful to him. And Brad Stinnett, uh, those guys, I mean, they. I told them I wanted to coach football for the next 30 years. And they said, I mean, it was almost instantly, you'd be a great coach at, at Western Kentucky. Hmm. And provided me an opportunity, and the rest is what it is right now. So um, be grateful to those guys. And obviously I'm grateful for, to a lot of people for what they've done to help me throughout this process. I mean, most importantly, grateful to my wife who, who – 
knew that we weren't going to make any money going yeah. to Western Kentucky, <laughs> and she was she was willing to, you know, take that on in order for me to really follow my dream. She tells me all the time, you know, I'm just happy that you're happy that you get to do what you want to do every day, and I, I love her for it. Yeah. Last question: What do you what do you, what are going to be some of your goals? What do you need to get done in spring ball? I mean, you have to get familiarity, but you've got uh, you, know, you do have some a couple of receivers that are here. Yes, sir. Uh, that you recruited, but. What's your immediate goal with uh, spring ball? Uh, I mean, uh, most, most importantly, obviously, it's learning the playbook, getting those guys to know and understand the playbook. But I just want to create an edge for our guys. That's probably the biggest, most important thing, um, something that I would have been able to do pretty much wherever I've gone is have an attitude about how you play the game and how you approach the game every day. And uh, that that's hugely important to me and, and create that brotherhood. I've already had the guys over to the house, mm -hmm. you know, for the Super Bowl and uh, we had some food over there and hung out. But I wanted to create that brotherhood, but that brotherhood to have an edge to it uh, so that, you know, nothing can really penetrate it so that these guys go out there on game day and uh, they sort of have each other's back. There was a couple of really good catches in the fourth quarter of that game, by the way. That was an amazing <laughs> game for, for uh, receivers as well. I just have a sense this is not going to be our last visit, so I'm glad about that. And we'll look. We'll, and I know Stacy and Kyle and Brian, especially, will be watching you at practice. But we're going to watch this. It's going to be fun to watch this whole thing develop. Uh, uh, things don't happen immediately, but they happen in steps. So that, uh, that's what you're going to try to do, I'm sure. All right, we will take a short break and bring on uh, David Bodai. I don't know, David, if you can top this, but he's going to give it give it a shot. And uh, we'll take that in two minutes on Golden Black Live.